All right, so we're finishing up um, what we did yesterday, uh, example five, and we're taking a look, I think we're on example, yeah, example five. So it says evaluate. Uh, we went over what that word meant yesterday. So if you need to look back at your other side or, but can somebody remind me what does it mean to evaluate? What do you have to do? Yep. Exam. Okay, what do you mean? Like really look into it. Okay, and what would what are you gonna do? Like if I said evaluate, go. Simplify. Okay, go. Oh, well, you actually do it. Yeah, what would be the first thing you would do? Replace that x with four. Exactly. The first thing you're gonna do is anytime you have a letter, you're gonna change that letter to what they tell you. If you have more than one letter, well, you do both. This one just has one letter, and um, Aileen told us perfect you're going to replace the x with 4. How did you know to replace x with 4? Well, they tell you. Let x equal 4. All right. Um, so let's, let's do that. Uh, Blake, can you tell me what this would look like when I replace x with 4? You tell me exactly what to write. Uh, 3 okay. 4 squared. 3, and how do you want to write times 4? With a dot. With a dot. Okay, we can do it that way. What's the other way you could have done it? You could have put parentheses around the 4, but the dot works perfect. All right, keep going. 3 times 4 squared, yep. Um, minus 2 times 4 plus 1. And I did times 4 again the same way he said the first time, but you could use parentheses. And then you said plus 1. All right, now this becomes a PEMDAS problem, right? You plugged in what you needed to, plug in a value for the variable. Now we go through um, how about, um, Tristan, what's the first thing we got to do with order of operations? Begins with a P. Uh, parentheses. Parentheses. Do I have any parentheses there? No. No? Skip it. Okay. If you don't have that step, you don't have to worry about that step. So now we go to the E in PEMDAS. Um, yep, Olivia, what's the E? Um, exponents. Exponents. Do we have any exponents? Yes. Yes. We do have an exponent on the 4. So. In this step, that's the only thing that's going to change. It's, we're not going to do anything else. And you know what? I don't know if you guys have a little more room, or you might have to write small, but I need a little more room. So three times. Now we need to do four. How do you say that? There's two ways. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Lily? Four times four, four to the second. Four to the second power, four squared, or four times four. Um, and how about? Um, Adriana, if I do 4 times 4, what do I get? 16. 16, perfect. 16 minus, just copy everything else. All right. We did parentheses. We did exponents. Um, how about, Jaden, what's the next thing we do? Uh, we multiply times Yeah, we're going to do any multiplication and division. Okay, whatever you see but you start from left to right. So we're gonna do three times 16. Okay, if you need your calculator, um, if it was like a test and you needed one, you can use it. I'll just type in three times 16, and we get 48. Uh, what's gonna come right after the 48? Uh, how about James? Um, minus. Yep, good, got the minus, that's still there. Now, do I have more multiplication? Yeah, we can do it in the same step. You just got to make sure you copy the minus down first, just like that. Um, how about, um, Sophia, what's the next uh, calculation I'm going to do that's multiplication? Two times four. Two times four. And how much is that? Eight. Yep. Eight. And the rest of it? Well, I don't see any more multiplication, so I'm just going to copy down plus one. All right, so we did... Parentheses. We did exponents, we did multiplication, we didn't have any division. What are the last two things we do? And we don't necessarily do one before the other, we just do them as we see them, left to right. Yeah, um, Lucas. Adding and subtracting. Yep, do any adding and subtracting, just go in order from left to right. Now, I would normally keep going down, but I'm, I'm out of room, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go over there. All right, um, how about um, Kayla? So we're going to do 48 minus 8, 
right? Very first thing. How much is 48 minus 80? Yeah, Kayla. Oh, um, because it's 48 minus 80, it's 48. 40, perfect. So we got 40. What do I still have that I didn't do anything with yet? Yep. The one. Still have the plus one. Now you could have done that in the same step, right? But we will, we'll just do it in two steps. So my final answer here is how much, um, how about Elizabeth? 41. 41, nice job. Okay, so when you see the word evaluate, that means they're looking for a number answer. And that's exactly what we got, 41. So any questions on, on that? All right, so I think this is the last property that's on your sheet, and it's the distributive property. How many people have heard of that before? Distributive. Sometimes, did anybody ever see it written like this? Where you go, you draw those little lines? Yeah, that's how most, most people usually do it. And what, what do those lines mean to do? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, Lucas. You take the three times the both numbers. Yeah, exactly. You're multiplying whatever's on the outside of the parentheses by what's on the inside. So on your, on your guided notes where it says, kind of right in the middle, distributive property. Okay. The number on the outside of the parentheses, now the number could actually be in two different spots. It could be in front, but it also could be after it. Okay. So if I go like this, uh, that might be too small to read. So I'm gonna, I'll make it bigger in a second. But on the right, right here, the number was in front. This is exactly the same thing. You can put the three in front of the parentheses or behind it. We usually like to put it in front. But if it's behind, it's still the same thing. Three times two, three times x. Exactly the same thing. So let me make that bigger. Uh, let's see. That might be, actually, that's off the screen. Let's go like that. All right, so the number on the outside of the parentheses could be in front or it could be behind it, is multiplied by each term on the inside of the parentheses. Now, we're going to say this a lot, but the sign to the left always goes with the number. So, like if I look here, that's a negative 8. How do I know? Because look to the left of it it's got a minus sign, right? right here. That's a positive one. How do I know? To the left of it, it's got a plus. But how about this one? I know 48 is plus, but it's not written like this. It's not a plus 48. We don't, we don't normally do that. So how do I know that this 48 is positive? Think about what would have to be there if it was negative. Yeah. Yeah, there's no negative sign, right? So if you look at the very first number in a bunch of numbers, if there's no sign there at all, it's positive. Okay? Every other number after that will have either a minus or a plus to the left of it. Okay? It's just the first one that can be a little different. Okay? So let's try to solve this one using um, distributive property. So this is, let's see, I think it says A on mine, but on your guided notes, it just says example six. That's okay. You could just, you, that's fine. So it's the first number. What's the number that we're going to distribute here? Yeah, seven. seven. What kind of seven? Positive or negative? Positive. Yep, positive seven. And who can tell me what it's going to get distributed to? Yep, um, Cadence? The positive 8 and the positive 5. The positive 8 and the positive 5. So I'm going to write it exactly the way she said it first. She said distribute the 7 to the positive 8. And distribute means, what does that mean to do again? What operation, James? Multiplication. Multiplication, perfect. Distribute the 7 to the positive 8. Okay? Distribute the 7 to the positive 5. There's just one, one thing I need to put there. What am I 
missing. Yeah, um, Aileen? Aileen? The addition sign in between. Yeah, you just copy down whatever sign you had before. That's the sign you put right there. So we just distributed the 7 times 8. We're going to do that. And then 7 times 5. Hey, now it's a PEMDAS problem. It's blue. No, nope. yeah, it changes colors in time if I, if I touch it. A few different colors, not that many. You should but. keep it on yellow. Okay, okay, we'll put it on a, put it on yellow if I find All right, so PEMDAS, parentheses. What do you guys think? Parentheses here? No. No. Exponents? No. No. So simpler, no exponents. Multiplication? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole point of the distributive property. Multiply. Okay. Um, how about 7 times 8? Anyone think they know? Yep. Um, it's Jayliana, right? Jayliana. Jayliana. Got it. Yeah, what is that come out to? 56. Perfect. 56. <laughs> now the plus sign, it's just going to stay right there for now. We're not doing any addition yet. We still have some more multiplication. Um, what's the other multiplication we have? Yeah. Um, 7 times 5. 7 times 5, which is? 35. 35. Okay. So now the last step, we did multiplication. We didn't have division. We've got addition. So just add. You can, if you can do it in your head, that's fine. If you, yep, we get 91. Okay, what I don't want you to do is like think, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to write it down and like on a test you just put 81 and I'm good. Right? If you accidentally put 81 and you could have just used the calculator, you could have just got it right. So it's always good just to double check. Even if you think you know the answer, I always type it in. Sometimes like, you know, after working all day and I'm doing numbers, I think, oh yeah, you know, 12 plus uh, 3 is going to give me 14. And I'm like, wait, well, no, I'm 50. You know, and the calculator catches my mistake. You know, we make mistakes. All right. So we get 91. <coughs> so any questions on that? We're going to see that property all year. Distributive property comes up with, with all kinds of stuff. All right. So now, I think we're the very last thing. So and you have this already written on your guided notes. It says examine this expression, right? This is an algebraic expression, right? We defined that yesterday. It has numbers, it has letters, and it has one or more operations. Okay, I see a couple operations. I see addition, plus, and plus. But what other operation is also there? Yep. Multiplication. Multiplication. 7 times x. 13 times x times y. So we got a couple different operations. Does anybody know what this, this, and this are called? This expression has three blanks in it. Three different, begins with a t. You know? In a school year, there's, there's four of these. Yep. Terms. Terms, yeah, good job. Four terms. All right, well, in school year. But in this expression, there are three terms. How do you know what a, what a term is? Well, it says right here, the parts of an expression that are connected by addition and subtraction signs. So if you just have this, how many terms is that? That's one, one big term. What if I put in a times z times q times p? Still one big term. You can multiply as many things as you want, and it's still one term. Now, if I do this, that, I just put a plus sign in. Now it's two terms. One real big one, and then a number. Okay, so terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So how many terms here? X minus Y plus 12Z. X minus Y plus 12Z. How many terms there? Three. Yeah, three. Now, if you have a term that is just a number, no letter, that's special. That's called a constant term. Or just constant. So you've got a spot on your guided notes to write that in. So if you have a term that is just a number, no letters at all, we call that a constant or constant term. Okay, same, same idea. Okay. And the 
very last thing we're going to look at are what are called like terms and non-like terms. And that's it. That'll be the last two things for today. Uh, Kids, yeah? Like terms are things that have the same variables or just like the same numbers. So if you have like a 12 and a 10 and a variable, it's considered a like term. Yeah. To the same variable like x, y, and things like that. Yeah, exactly. So like terms, so on the line where it says like terms, you want to put, it's a number, which is what, what Caden said, it could just be a number, or it's something that has the same variable and the same exponent. Okay, so Caden's gave us an example of like, what, what were the two numbers you said? 12 and 10. 12 and 10. Those are like terms because they're just numbers. How about 3x? Anyone think they could give me another term that would be a like term with 3x? Keep in mind, it's got to have the same variable. Yep, 4x. 4x. Those are like terms. How about 2y? And what's a like term with 2y? Y. 2y and y. Now, she just said y. What number is really in front of the y if we don't write it? We're going to see that all year. One. Yeah. If you want to put in the one, you can, but you don't need to. Now, what if I said 4x squared? What would be a like term with 4x squared? x squared. Sure. 1x squared. Right? Same letter, same exponent. x, x. Exponent of 2, exponent of 2. Okay? So that's the key. They've got to have the same letter and the same exponent on that letter. So the opposite of that, and the last thing we'll look at, are what are called non like terms. So that could be a number that has a different variable attached or different exponents. So if I said 2x, could somebody give me a term that's not a like term? Okay, it just has to have a different variable. Yeah? 2y. 2y. 2x and 2y, non-like terms. How about 3x squared and 4x cubed? Same letter. x and x. But it's because the exponents are different. Those are not like terms. Right? Not only do you have to have the same letter, you've got to have the same exponent. So I could do 3x squared and 4x squared. That'd be OK. Or I could do 4x cubed and 3x cubed. But they both have to have the same exponent okay? for them to be like terms. Those are not like terms. How about um, 5 and x? Are those like terms? No. One's a number, one's a letter. Those definitely aren't like terms. Okay, so those are non-like terms. Okay. And the very last blank is the last thing you have to fill in on your uh, reference sheet. The number in front of a letter. Like in this case, it's 2. In this case, it's 3. In this case, it's 4. Does anybody know what the number in front of a letter is called? It begins with a C. Yeah? Coefficient. Coefficient. Very good. So on your, on your blank there, that's what you want to fill in. The number in front of the letter is called your coefficient. The reason I explained what like terms were is because when we start adding and subtracting, you can only combine like terms. All right, so for tomorrow, make sure you bring your binder. And if you didn't bring back the syllabus sheet, please bring that back signed. All right, have a great day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.